So now we're going to move on to the discussion of the delta function well. And before I can do that, I'm going to first define what the direct delta function is. So the direct delta function is equal to 0 when x is, e is not equal to 0. And then it's going to be equal to infinity when x is equal to 0. And then it is also further bound by this constraint where this integral has to be equal to 1. So you can imagine this direct delta function being an infinitely sharp spike. So when x is not equal to 0, so in all these regions over here, this function is going to be equal to 0, and right at this very point it's going to shoot up into this infinitely tall spike. And it's going to be always bound by this constraint. And also uh, notice that if we follow this definition over here, if we change this expression up a bit, if we have delta of x minus a, this is actually a translation of the spike over to the right hand side. So this function over here would be a spike at this very location because you can see when x is equal to a for this part the inside the argument is going to be equal to a minus a which is equal to zero so it translates to the spike being at this very point over here and then also another interesting property we should notice is that let's get rid of this is that if we have f of x some function multiplied by delta of x minus a notice that this is always going to be equal to f of a times delta of x minus a. And this is true because when x is not equal to a, this whole thing is just going to be equal to 0. When x is not equal to a, this whole thing is also going to be equal to 0. And then when x is equal to a, we just have f of a, f of a, and these two terms are identical. So this identity over here has to be true. And then using this, we can also prove a pretty special identity. So if we have this expression over here, so if we're integrating some function multiplied by the direct delta function, we can always use this to replace the integral with something like this. And then you can see that f of a is just a constant, so I can just pull this out. So in the end I get f of a times this integral which by definition is equal to 1. If I integrate the direct tensile function, this is going to be equal to 1. So in the end, I get f of a. So this is another, another important property that is going to be useful later on.